everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and last week we actually painted a plague bearer and i thought he came out pretty cool it was fun to paint nurgle it's fun to step outside of your comfort zone and if we're going to paint a little plague bearer well we've got to do a cool base for him so this week we're going to talk about painting a plague world base uh, something that's gross disgusting bubbly oozy and fun so let's get amongst it uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. All right, so you can see the paints for this, and it's pretty simple. Uh, as always, the paints will, that I'm actually using when I use them, they'll scroll up in the top so you know what's going on. But we begin our base with our old friend cork. I see a lot of people use cork on bases, and it's perfectly fine. The trick is you can't stop at cork. That's where people go wrong. They apply some cork and then they just call it a day. But our goal here is trying to raise the model up and make an area where we can then have other effects, water and mud and rocks and stuff like that. So the first step is to making it not look like cork is to mess up the cork. So here I'm just using a pin and digging around in the cork, creating unnatural breaks and divots and things like that up top. You'll see how we continue to mess it up as we go along but you just want to bust up that surface. You need to change the top from being perfectly flat and change the sides from looking like cork. Now here is my recent discovery. This is some Liquitex coarse gel medium. I really love this stuff for doing extremely fine grain. And I found these super cool brushes on Amazon that are supposed to be like for some kind of uh, other purpose, like makeup or something. I don't know, I'll put the link in the description. But they're so great for spreading this kind of paste or just messing around on your bases because unlike your hair brushes, they actually don't get gummy. You can just wipe them off and they're silicone, so it's really nice. I'm making this base for a plague bearer, but of course you can make these sorts of plague world bases for anything. Could be anybody on top of here. It doesn't even have to be something Nurgle related. Uh, just representing a gross, awful world. And so we want that to be muddy. Now that it's dried, we've got to break up that texture though. Okay, again, continuing to make it look not like cork. So one side of the base is gonna have some rocks on it just to again, further create change. And that's what you wanna do on your bases. Even though you've got a small amount of space, it's great if you can have areas of differentiation. So all of my rocks are on the left side. As you'll see later, we're gonna put in some uh, water effects and those will be kind of in the middle. The idea being that you want to make sure that your bases have that they feel like they're part of a varied world i just primed it in black and then from here we're just going to go ahead and again use all brush no airbrush on this so we're just taking a nice soft dry brush and doing a nice little run over the top of it to pick out all the details and start to create that contrast i'm focusing a lot more on the front of the base this is another simple trick to pop up the way your miniatures look focus more highlights toward the front of the base because then it looks like the light is at a place where the viewer's eye is and it's just more visually interesting. Uh, I'm, the reason I'm putting this thinned sepia ink over everything is twofold. One, I want to get rid of some of the black, work in a brown tone. Two, sepia is a perfect color because it has a little bit of green in the brown. So again, it's setting my tones for what I eventually want. And it just kind of helps to reinforce some of the shadows. Now I'm going to take some Plague Bearer flesh, and though this isn't flesh, yet again we can help to set some tones. Nature is very random, and a Plague World would theoretically have layers and layers of muck and goop and mud and gross sick all on top of each other. So we're aiming to repeat lots of simple steps to move colors around and create natural variants. On these lower areas that are still mostly black or dark brown because of the way that the dry brushing works, I'm just taking some Rhinox hide and forcing it in there and then kind of smoothing it around. Now why Rhinox hide? Well, because Rhinox hide is a purple brown. And as stated in the last video, purple makes an excellent complement to green as our shadow color. Now I'm just gonna push up that green through a little bit of pigment. Pigment is very strong, but don't worry, we're gonna knock it right back. So we can go a little ham with this. I shove some of the pigment on and then force it around. You notice how I then rub my brush all over it, really getting it down in the paint. Um, people ask me all the time whether or not you seal pigment or stuff like that. Most of the time you don't need to. In, the, in this case, you'll see how we cheat 
and seal this pigment without needing to actually seal it. But next up, I go over some brown because we do want some kind of earth tones here, something that looks more like actual brown mud. And then finally, a little bit of red for the same reason I put a little bit of red on the Plague Bearer, because red is the complementary color to green and will make it more eye-catching if there's just a little hint of it in there. Then I take some, some of this Agrax and I just dab it all over. Notice I'm not wiping. I don't want to wipe because wiping will pick up too much of the pigment. I just dab and dry. Once we're all dry, we've significantly darkened our base, but we still have a lot of different colors in there. So then I'm dry brushing again. This is almost think of this like edge highlighting. Notice how I'm focusing on the edges and the top front of the base. Just trying to bring those back up, create more of that natural variation. But in the same way that edges gather light on our miniatures, edges gather light on our bases. So, and a little quick dry brush on that texture helps to pick that out. Now we begin the magic part of the base. This was all just, you know, muddy earth. And take some of this very green paint. You can use any green paint. I haven't been using Orc Flesh. Any green paint will work. I'm going to lay that down right in that area. Now what I'm doing by laying down that green is setting up for this next step. This is my new favorite trick for water effects. This is Green Stuff World UV Resin. I absolutely love this stuff. So what this is, is it's a little squidgy resin you kind of squeeze out of this tube. And you notice it's pretty controllable, like it's got a really good surface tension, so it doesn't run everywhere or anything like that. I'm going to take the previous tool you saw me use, and I'm just going to, you know, kind of make sure that it's in the places I want it, shape it around, smooth it out a little bit, make sure the pool is covering all the areas I like, and I just, you know, wipe that off uh, somewhere. Then I'm going to take these little, you can get these silica gel packets. They come in clothing and boxes all the time, but you can also just order bulk amounts of them. I'm going to take these little silica balls, and I'm going to just drop a few of them right into that wet UV resin. And I'm going to make sure they sink down in there, but not all the way. They'll just kind of wonderfully halfway sink into this puddle of goop. And what they then form are perfect little bubbles. It's so easy and wonderful. These little gel packets are, you, you can get a, you can, like I said, you can order them off eBay or Amazon for a few dollars. Then we just hit them with the UV. And after about 10 seconds of UV light, it is solid as a rock. Now we need to make it look nuclear, toxic. And so here we're bringing out the Green Stuff World Fluorescent Ink. I love this stuff for this kind of purpose. You get big old globs of it on your brush and you just dab. I'm not painting it. That surface is way too glossy and smooth to paint, but the ink will settle in and make it just wonderfully look like it's this glowing green toxic waste. And you notice how it ends up pooling around the bubbles, uh, around the little beads, which is exactly what we want because now we're gonna take a little bit of the bilious green from War Colors, but any bright green like this, I guess, Scorpion green or something like that would work. And we're just gonna dab each of those little bubbles with this to make it look like this horrible radioactive bubbling up out of the swamp, uh, out of this toxic ooze. And uh, Captain Planet would definitely not be happy. I'm also going to dab a few little spots around the base that aren't the bubble. You want to make it look like there's other little bits of this radioactive stuff or this toxic stuff, you know, in there, not just the bubbles. Other smaller bubbles that would be in scale, because admittedly these are pretty huge. But that's okay. They look cool. Now we're just going to add a few small tufts. I picked something very dark green and kind of dead looking. You can use any tufts you like, but um, these happen to be from Gamer's Grass and I just fasten those in place uh, to make sure it's, I use a little bit of uh, gel glue. And then as always, everything on our base gets painted. So we have three different tufts. We just take a little ice yellow, give them a quick dry brush to make sure that the tops look again, more gray and dead, uh, which seems appropriate for this kind of an atmosphere. Take a little Agrax and sweep it around the bottom of the tuft to make it feel like it's part of the world it's in. You shove a little down on the tuft, you sweep it around the outer edge. That takes the tuft and ties it together with the environment it's in. Oh yeah, that last step, blacking out the rim of that base. Ooh, 
is there anything better than that final moment when your base is done and you just slap down that black paint right along the rim. Mmm. Yeah. Anyways, that's a funny joke and I quite like it. So, then you finish it out. There's our little plague bearer in his toxic world. Uh, I thought this came out pretty fun. If you liked this, give it a like. If you've got questions about any of the tools I used, drop those down in the comments. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.